Good day and welcome to Let's Talk Politics on Wazobia Max. On the show with me today is lawyer and social commentator Ayola Julius. And today to discuss a very important issue of national concern, we are going to analyze thoroughly events unfolding in Nigeria's political space. The social media is a viable tool of engagement and many have used it to good effect in different parts of the world. Just like the Arab Spring, Nigeria is on the brink of something really very big. And those at the fore of this campaign have come out to say that it is reaching out to the people and giving them the opportunity to express themselves and demand more from those who are entitled to work in their best interest for all that they receive. I'm talking about calls for hashtag revolution now, pioneered by former presidential candidate of the AAC in the 2019 presidential elections Omoyele Showere. Now the DSS over the weekend picked him up at his residence in the wee hours and he's been held in communicado before it was revealed that he's in a high class facility detained in Abuja. Today we'll be discussing all the issues surrounding the conversation and most importantly the core of the issue. Welcome to Let's Talk Politics today. Thank you so much for having me. Now let's first begin with the call by the presidential candidate, former presidential candidate in the 2019 elections, for Nigerians to rise up and chart a course for their own development. Certain people have come out to say that the term is a major problem. Revolution, protest, change, agitation, and the likes. From your perspective, when you first came across that hashtag, hashtag revolution now, what was your perception of this particular action? Well, uh, my perception of uh, the re hashtag revolution now is unfortunately uh, such that I feel they were ill advised in terms of choice of words. The word revolution will be given so many meanings by the government of the day for them to achieve a particular end. So I would expect them to have just streamline themselves to a particular word that is more constitutionally guaranteed. And I'm talking about the word protest. If they have chosen the word protest, for example, I mean, it will be difficult for the government of the day to carry the banner of security uh, over every other thing, in which case they would say, oh, if you're going to do revolution, it means you want to topple the government. Because the literal meaning of the word revolution is to cause a social you know, change in the political landscape of any society. So if it succeeds, it becomes legitimate. If it doesn't succeed, it's a coup d'etat. And every government has a responsibility to ensure that it is not toppled or changed in a manner that is not guaranteed by the Constitution, which is the ground norm. So for me, I think um, Mr. Showare was thought properly advised, even though there may be other meanings that can be ascribed to the word revolution. They can say it's a political revolution, it's a social revolution, you know, whatever meaning you want to ascribe. And I remember in 2015, or I mean, during the, you know, uh, event leading to 2015 election, there were a lot of protests in Nigeria, and there were a lot of placards with inscription revolution. Now, there was one that said 65 Naira Palita or revolution, okay? So such words ordinarily should not um, carry an impression that Nigeria is going to be toppled. But when you look at Nigerian uh, political landscape right now, such a word may be too strong, a word to be used to agitate for any rights or any privileges that Nigerians feel they deserve. But I agree with him in terms of, um, in terms of uh, the move to make a protest Nigerians seem to make a loud noise because the suffering is too much, the killings are, I mean, is getting horrendous every day. But we should not just use the word revolution because revolution, when you use that word, any incumbent will give it a security meaning, which is that you want to topple the government. I don't believe that he should be arrested. I would rather support him being invited to ask him a few questions. Otherwise, arresting him, I mean, would be very right. Now, le let's talk about um, the questions to be asked and not allow the terminology revolution or protest yes, yes. Um, overshadow the discussion. 
Now, there are certain demands that have been made. Better life for Nigerians, living wage, um, insecurity, and all the issues that we are faced with. Just ensuring that the government, uh, you know, the constitutional mandate of protecting and guaranteeing the lives and property of the people is one that they attain. Now, let's look at the demands that have been made. Um, aside from uh, the term revolution or protest and ask if these demands are very legitimate. Because if governments exist in continuum and there's the general agreement that the President Mohamed Buhari administration inherited a system that would take time to effect some sort of change that would impact positively on the lives of the people, uh, is it legitimate to come out and say a government that has spent first four years in a two tenure uh, should exit the stage for something that would uh, you know allow for more people to be represented in government well um for me i'm a positivist that means that I'm, a, I'm a man that speaks based on law and nothing but law sometimes you want to you know add some moral perspective to it but then the law is the law what am i trying to say all these demands being churned out are legitimate demands, ordinarily. But we are also in a democracy. Every aspect of Nigerian society, broken down into constituencies, have people representing them at the National Assembly. I would expect Nigerians now to begin to engage their representatives they are senators. Please, Senator X, you have to do this. You have to put this on the front burner for us. If you are not going to do this, we are going to recall you. That's democracy. Because Nigerians cannot elect to be speaking from two ends of the mouth. You have elected someone to speak on your behalf. There's an election in this country. People came up to be voted for. People who are very responsible. People with proven track records. But Nigerians by themselves, chose to vote for those who do not have their plight at heart. So having made that choice, which is constitutional, they must be able to bear the brunt of whatever is coming out of it. And if they would want to have a change, they still have to do it within the ambit of the law, which is that, look, Mr. Honorable Member representing our constituency, you are not attending to our problems. We can't hear you on the National Assembly. You cannot, what are you saying? Are you not aware that the minimum wage is not being you know, implemented. We want to hear you speak about it. If it's not speaking about it, we are going to remove you. Is, I mean, our law makes provision for recalling any representative who is not representing his constituency very well. So all these demands, I would expect them to mobilize and provoke discussion about it within the, you know, uh, non-governmental organizations who will in turn like Sarah used to do, who will in turn mount pressure on government officials as well as the representatives to ensure these demands are put as burning issues at National Assembly. Okay, so, but if you want to zero in down to each of the demands warranting the protest, why we end up having anarchy in Nigeria? These demands are fantastic demands. But there is a process that must be followed. That process can be painful. That is the problem with Nigerians. We find it very difficult, extremely so, to apply ourselves to process. We don't want to process. Now let's talk about process. Yes. Um, Nobel laureate Professor Wole Sheringa has come out to condemn the action of the DSS and have even likened the PMB-led administration to the style adopted by the late General Sani Abacha. Mm -hmm. uh, was the DSS, uh, you know, speaking legally now, right in conducting themselves in the manner that they did to pick up Mr. Omoyele Showare in the wee hours of uh, the day and take him, hold him in communicado before it was revealed that he's in a <laughs> high um, garden facility in Abuja. Look, look, let's not be unreasonably more Catholic than the Pope. It's not only Showare. Many Nigerians are arrested every day and kept in detention for weeks. But it doesn't make it right, whether it's Shawari or not. I'm going somewhere. So that is the problem with Nigeria. It's not peculiar to Shawari. And our courts, no matter how terrible some of us want to say they are, they still give, um, they still enforce fundamental rights. Arresting Shawari 
is a different ball entirely. The arrest for me is not right. On the premise that even if he says there is going to be a revolution in Nigeria, the question we should ask ourselves is, does Yore have a standing army? Does he have ammunition? Because we say revolution is to cause a change in the legal order. So by which means will Shore achieve, and does he have the potentials to overrun or overwhelm the government? The answer is no. So merely saying revolution now does not automatically translate it to an offense for which you can arrest someone unless you have concrete evidence. Criminal law does not hypothecate. In criminal law, you don't do hypothesis. You must have fact. Oh, we have heard that he has contact with some foreign, you know, foreign bodies. We have heard that they are mobilizing 10,000 men somewhere. We have heard, you know, you, you can't just hold it here. You must have concrete evidence to support whatever you have heard. So when you pick him up and detain him, you are violating his rights. If they have all those information by now, I would expect them to have charged him to court. Not doing so will amount to further infraction of his fundamental rights. So arresting someone for something is different from defining what that thing is. We have said revolution is an offense. It's a coup. That is to say you want to cause a change in the legal order in a manner that is not contemplated by the Constitution. If Article was the person saying revolution now, I, you can arrest him because he has the means. Being a former vice president, he has the means, he has the potentials, he has the international connection to make it happen. But for someone like me saying revolution now does not mean I can afford to overwhelm Nigeria. So everything has to do with common sense, I mean with common sense, law and common sense. For me, the DSS, were not, they are not acting with due respect commonsensically by arresting him. When you arrest him, what do you want to achieve? Arresting him does not mean people won't go and protest. When you arrest him, you make him more popular. Now, you have spoken about elections and how it is clear in the Constitution that um, people can uh, choose those who are going to represent their interests. Now, spokesperson of the president, Mr. Garu Bashehu, um, in a series of messages posted on, on Twitter, uh, said the ballot box is the only constitutional means of changing government and a president in Nigeria. The days of coup and revolutions are over. Those making the revolution call hide behind the veil of social media modernity. But without revealing the identity of their sponsors, this shadowy campaign is no better and no more democratic than the days of old. The president calls on all those who seek to use and hide behind everyday citizens to attain power through undemocratic and violent means, which has been alluded to come out clearly and be identified. They should lead their march in person. Only then will they begin to have the right to call themselves leaders before the people of Nigeria. So this is, to a considerable degree, um, saying that perhaps there are people who support this particular action and might be giving back into this. If we look at trends in um, the international space, it appears like certain people with interest sponsor uh, drama or action in different parts of the world. Is Nigeria towing the line of those who are falling victims to such actions by world powers? Nigeria is not throwing any of such lines. You see, the greatest service to this government is someone like Ga Sheo Gaba or Gaba Sheo. They do not have the acumen, legally speaking and politically speaking, to address issues. When they address issues, what do they do? They provoke it. This type of statement credited to him is unfortunate. But is it possible to say that he has information that... He has no information. Nigerians generally are tired. People are suffering. Forget whatever what was I mean was uh, was employed. Ordinarily, Nigerians are they are pained. People can't travel out of their comfort. I mean, they can't travel from their from the urban center to the I mean uh, to their respective villages. They they get kidnapped every day. They get killed every day, allegedly by a particular section of the country, and nothing is being done about it. Every now and, every now and then you hear uh, Boko Haram giving being given amnesty. You cannot you cannot be you cannot be. <laughs> You cannot be, you know, you cannot be playing politics with issues of security. When you give 400 Boko Haram, for example, amnesty, what, what message are you passing across? So let me go do some Boko Haram activities. When I'm tired, I'll raise up my hand. I'm, I want amnesty. It's not done that way. Even amnesty is not even granted. I mean, in the mind, they are granting it. Before you can grant someone amnesty, you must have charged him to court first. You can't just give people amnesty in a blanket manner. 
How many of those deaths were charged to court? So Nigeria is in a tense situation right now, and anybody will be commenting on Nigeria must comment on Nigeria with certain words. You can't just be using words that are very provocative. Tebashe cannot use that kind of language to speak to Nigerians. What should be addressing is why did Nigeria get to this level in the first place? Now, talking about why Nigeria got to this level, it's also important that when we discuss the problems, we prefer solutions to these problems or look at ways through which you know, governments, the major stakeholders involved can alleviate the suffering of the people and deal with the situation so it doesn't get to crisis level, even though certain people allude to um, that fact that that is where we are at the moment. Now, speaking from the perspective of the government, what would you advise should be done to manage this situation and at least you know, give confidence to the Nigerian people that the government that was popularly elected at the general election will do all that they can to see that they improve their lives and alleviate their suffering? Well, for me, there's just one solution to Nigeria's problem. Just one, not two, not three. Whether you like it or not, you can break it down into several of solutions, but there's just one solution to Nigeria's problem. And which is? Which is obeying the law. Nigeria government does not obey the law. That is where the problem always starts from. The, you, you can't choose which law to obey and not to obey. For example, the, the, the court of Nigeria has granted someone a bail. Government has refused to comply with why would government behave that way? When you when you when you when you when you don't obey your court, what you are what you end up doing is that you end up turning villains into heroes. I'm telling you in the next 10, 5 years, people will carry placard in Nigeria and say, free Evans now, free Evans now. Because you are not following your law. El Zaki has been in detention for, you know, for so long a time with his wife. The courts, even when was court granted him, they let them go. Granting people bail does, it's a temporary res respite. Bail does not mean you are excused from the crime. It means you can be coming to attend to the case from your house, based on certain conditions. But Nigerian government does not obey the law. It's a problem. When you don't obey the law, the whole state will be destroyed. On minimum wage, you have said it's 10,000 naira per, per month. Nobody is paying it. You get what I'm saying? Nobody is paying it. On elections, you said you have used server. Now you have denied ever using server. These are incidences that will create confusion and tell the people that, look, you are in for abracadabra. On security issues, certain group of organization need to be declared as terrorists. Okay? Why it is dangerous to declare full army act men as terrorists? May Yeti Allah that has been giving them some kind of leanings should be declared as terrorists, as a terrorist organization. I I I I, I M N or what do you call them? Islamic movement in Nigeria. Just proscribed. There is no reason why you cannot proscribe May Yeti Allah. Because it will be difficult and dangerous to say full army acts men are terrorists because there are certain full army acts men who are not terrorists. And the Tulani Asme are not an organization. But there's a group that keeps speaking for them. They even go as they even went as far as threatening some state for not allowing Ruga. Such a group should be proscribed. It will show that you are serious about Nigerians. Secondly, government itself a few days ago at, uh, came to say five million Nigerians have been rescued from extreme poverty. That is an admission by government that they are not doing anything. Because in Nigeria, all we know is poverty, but now we have extreme poverty. It means they are creating a cadre of poverty in Nigeria. Maybe extreme poverty, average or abject poverty, and you have poverty. So it means they are not doing anything. The government needs to create an enabling environment for Nigerians to, you know, to thrive entrepreneurially. Why? You can't just say that you are giving people hand out of 10,000 Naira or 5,000 Naira, I mean, style as trader money, Therefore, you have created opportunities. That is not anything. You have to ensure that the infrastructures that will push economic empowerment are in place. I can tell you for real that in Nigeria, if not if anywhere in Lagos State, all the roads are back. You cannot get to two points of businesses in a day. If you go to one, that is the end. Power, yes, power. Maybe power has improved by some um, some margin. Yes, I must con I must give it to them. Power has improved. But we need to do more. People need to have access to credit. Nowhere in the world you will find people living on direct cash. You hear of your friends abroad saying even their furniture, they bought them on mortgage, even their TVs on mortgage. You have to create a credit system. 
we are in the smart age. You can't keep, I mean, using the same system all over again. It will not work. And that's what is happening. If you cannot achieve a particular promise, do not make it. You have made so much noise about the new minimum wage, yet you would not want to pay it. But you are paying all your emoluments. Get what I'm saying? People will be angry. If you, you will find it very difficult to pay 30,000 minimum wage, which was used during the second time electioneering campaign, you will not pay it, but you are paying yourselves the, the, the I mean, whatever emolument that you think you are, you are better with. So there will be a problem. You have to pay the minimum wage. You have to, you know, maintain our infrastructures. You have to up the game of the security architecture. The archi Nigerian security architecture right now is not in, this, in a parallel state. There is no day in Nigeria that at least minimum 20 people do not die. Minimum. Even 20 is too small. I think 60. The last one was in Bono State. 60. Every day in Nigeria, people are killed violently. And those who kill them violently have never been apprehended. All you hear government saying is that we have destroyed the tactical base of the Boko Haram. And by that, they are even admitting that they have not defeated anybody. Because if Boko Haram has tactical base in our country, that means you are lying when you said you have defeated them technically. Because to have a tactical base means to have a unit of command where you carry out violent attack. So every day, what you will see is Air Force destroying tactical base of Boko Haram. Since 2015, you have been destroying tactical bases and the number of bombings keep increasing. So who is fooling who? But can one say that if we see action on the part of our security operatives, it's an indication that they are working and trying new what strategy action? to see. Like you just mentioned, bombing tactical bases. Finding out where these bases are located in the not, first place. I, I think they're not bombing anywhere. They just go in the air and throw bomb anywhere they like. They're not bombing anybody. Have you seen anybody brought out from these tactical bombings? Have you seen anybody? Have you seen bodies? You are a journalist. You should find out. Have you seen the Nigerian Air Force bringing out bodies of people who died resulting from their tactical bombing? We have seen some pictures and videos of so-called or alleged insurgents that were killed during a firefight with our security operatives. But if we admit that the government must do a lot more to see that on a lot security, of the on security, the economy, and several other um, important or key sectors, let's talk about those who are not happy and would rather register their displeasure with the government in whatever form, whether through um, revolution now, oh, protest, or strikes and the rest of them. Now let's talk about the people and an important role to play. How can the people, you know, demand more from government, hold their elected representatives accountable, and get them to work in their best interest? In ordinarily, no, no citizen in any society is expected to be having a direct interface with the central government. It's not done anywhere. Nigerians need to cultivate from now the habit of speaking with their representatives. All of them, as you find in Abuja, they will come to their constituency. One year, two years, they don't come there. When they come there, they just come and share rice and give people maybe fufu or gari, whatever. I mean, whatever idea you can find. We need to start engaging those that represent us. So that when they go to Abuja or when they go to their respective assemblies, they will have it at the back of their mind that, look, we have an informed followers. We can't be followers by violence. What we want to do now is being followers by violence. It's not right. Protest, yes, you can do protest. But to call for revolution means to overwhelm, to attempt to overwhelm the existing order. Nobody will allow it. No government in the world, even America, with its democratic level, will never allow you to say you want to carry out revolution. It's not done. What we should do, the followers need to up their game. They should up their game from the level of um, um, the Bokosebe, uh, see and buy. All those things will bring them poverty. They need to get to a level where they will say to themselves, I want to vote because this person I'm voting for appears to me to have the charisma and the acumen to fit into that office. In Nigeria, there are people who are in the National Assembly who cannot read and write very well. There are those who cannot speak decent English language. So if they can't do any of those things, how can they represent, say, 500,000 people? How, how would they represent? How would they contribute? So uh, uh, there is a problem with our followership. We need to work on our followership. A Shogore that came out for president, I mean, for, for, for in the last presidential election, he didn't get up to 100,000 votes. So Nigerians sometimes can be, I mean, can be hypocrites. 
This is the same person you did not vote for in the last election. Now he's calling you out for your revolution and want to carry placards. What is wrong with us? If we believe so much in his ideologies, and we believe he will take Nigeria to that promised land, we should have shown him this, I mean, we should have shown this by voting for him massively. Even the youth did not vote for him. It means that somebody is playing with our minds. If you read, Ganifemi was one time in this country a president candidate. He did not have up to 100,000 votes. Femi Palano was in a kid some time ago to contest for the governor of that state. He did not have up to 50,000 votes. So Nigerians are the problem of themselves. They vote for those that will kill them. It's just a choice. So if people have made a choice by law, you should let them bear the consequences of that choice so that when they get to the poll the next time, they will now vote based on experience. Because they told them so many lies against Jonathan. Ah, President Jonathan drinks to Google every day, not so wrong. He drinks to stupor. They are stealing money with bullion van every second. But the same Nigerians, in broad daylight, saw somebody who used bullion van. But they even have voted for him. So the, the problem with Nigeria is that hunger or poverty has killed our brain cells. We can't reason well. Because if we can reason well, there will be no reason why Shure should not have massive votes in Nigeria. Because he even promised 100,000 naira minimum wage. And some people said, he doesn't have experience. Well, what does he know? He doesn't know anything. He doesn't know anything, but he's calling you out for revolution. You want to go and overwhelm Nigeria. Nobody would accept that. Okay, now let's talk about um, projections. I'm moving on from here. He's in detention at the moment. Um, according to various reports, um, security operatives uh, were able to contain the situation in um, Sulere area of Lagos uh, today. That's uh, constituency. Now, <laughs> people are talking about mm -hmm. what would most likely happen moving forward. Um, as a lawyer, uh, what projections uh, do you think he will be charged to court or they would allow the SIMA down then release him? Or, like the IGP has said, treasonable felony and anybody that is in support of such um, a move. <laughs> um, you see, it will, be, it, will be, it will be petty for them to have him charged to court with an offense based on the revolution court. Because what ingredients would they have to prove that offense? If I say I'm going to kill you tomorrow, it doesn't mean I'm committing an offense. You are in Abuja and in Lagos, and I give you a phone call, I'm going to kill you tomorrow, prepare for me. Then, before tomorrow comes, I'm arrested. The question is, what if tomorrow comes, I begin to pray for you? Unless you have evidence that uh, mobilized people to carry out that threat, you have to show that if you are taking him to court, you have the burden to establish that if not that he was arrested, he has a capacity, not being a military personnel, not having a standing army, not having a, you know, any regional support from any of these ethnic nationalities, such as OPC or Arewa or anything, that he has the capacity and potentials to overwhelm Nigeria. The answer is no, he has no such capacity. Therefore, if they have him charged to court, they will end up losing the case. And when you lose the case, what happens? It becomes another hero. So my advice to them is, maybe you should let him go home and advise him that, look, you have a right to protest, it's your right, but maybe you should not use the word revolution because when you use that word revolution, mischief makers may find that word as an opportunity word for them to commit crime and put Nigeria into a serious anarchy. Let me tell you something. If you call for that revolution, what will happen in the South is that you will have an internecine war or internecine riots, or inter tribal riots, the propensity is very high that certain things of the country will be attacked in one part of the country, like in Lagos. People may misconstrue that to me, oh, these are the people killing us, these are the people who are kidnapping us in the bush, we are going to attack them. It's a, it's a, it's a possibility. So, I, I mean, the government did the right thing, but they should not, you know, violate him further by having him detained. Already has been violated, and I'm sure I'm sure whether we fight for his fundamental rights, because detaining him is, is not needed. Even though he has called for revolution, 
it does not have the potential. That's my word. It doesn't have the potential or the means to bring about a revolution. And they get about 200 million people. Okay? The Arab Spring that they refer to, in the Arab Spring and, and the one that happened uh, in Tunisia, Libya, uh, Libya, Egypt, nobody announced, nobody gave a notice of a revolution. You don't give notice of revolution. It's a, it's a spontaneous reaction. I think the one in uh, Egypt was caused by somebody who died by self-immolation. In Tunisia? Yeah, in Tunisia. He burned himself up. So nobody will give you notice of a revolution when it starts, you're keen to it. So if you want a revolution in a subconscious mind, you should have, you know, use the word protest. You're going to protest. Nobody can stop you from protesting. But if you want to cause a revolution, maybe government can stop you. Even if you don't have the potentials at that time, you can be stopped so that people who have mischief in their minds, people who don't want peace for Nigeria, will use that word as an opportunity to achieve an ugly end. And that would not be nice for anybody. Mm. In the end, in conflict or crisis situation, nobody wins. We must explore all the avenues to see that we negotiate, discuss all the problems, and most importantly, work towards a greater and more developed Nigeria. Thank you very much, lawyer and social commentator Ayola Julius. You're most welcome. Thank you so much. To enjoy more of this, our Ugon Get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.